Welcome back. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is another Tuesday Musee. Welcome back live on the channel. Want to say hello to everybody? We're going to go say hello to everybody in a second. Uh, but I'm foreshadowing something today. We are going to have some music uh, references to Yanni. We've got a segment called Reflections of Yanni. I'll be sharing some of my personal photos from the tour. So if you're a Yanni fan, stick around. Uh, also be talking about what the rhythm is I'm doing here a little bit later. We'll break it down and do some uh, odd meter. Uh, I've also got a musical game for you, of course. I've got some readings. And today's theme is um, gratitude. Of course, it's Thanksgiving week here in the U.S. and other places. Uh, places that have been influenced by the story of Thanksgiving and the idea of giving thanks um, and gratitude. All right. I'm going to play a little bit more, and we'll be right back. Thanks for being here. Okay, everybody, uh, we're going to go, uh, I'm going to go over to the desk right now. Also, this is coming up uh, a little bit later. I'll talk to you about that. I've done a video on this, but for some of you who haven't seen that or you're new to the channel, uh, I'll tell you what this is in a little bit. But right now, let's go back over. We're going to go over to the desk and say hello. All right. How are we going? How are we doing, everybody? All right. So I see some familiar names in the chat, by the way. Thanks to Roseanne Musser, as always, for being here to moderate and help you guys and uh, help you get your questions over to me because I'm doing so many things. I don't always see everything. I know it seems like I might be ubiquitous, but I'm not. I'm often just confused and excited Good combination. Okay, so um, I, I am going to talk about that instrument in a second, but I want to say hello to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving week. I hope you guys are excited and, and geared up to give all of your thanks. Uh, and, and the thing that's nice about gratitude and thanks is the more you give it away, the more you have. Uh, one of my favorite sayings, the scent of the rose remains on the hand of the one who gives it. Especially if you crumple it up in your hand before you hand it over. But I don't recommend that. Uh, that's not a good rose giving practice. However, your hand, will spell, your hand will smell nice after that. Speaking of hands, not to complain, but I'm not even going to show you guys this. But, you know, I was working on the car yesterday. Oh, you can kind of see it. Yes, I have an ouchie. Uh, I was working on the car, and I and I slipped, and I jammed my thumbnail. Oh, you don't even want to see it. It's bad. I was a little concerned that I wasn't going to be able to play congas, but uh, but it's okay. I'm not using my thumb 
to play congas. All right, so if you guys have any questions or anything at any point or requests, put them in the uh, chat and uh, we will get to it. All right, for right now, um, I'm actually gonna go back over and talk about that instrument I was playing. It's weird, right? It's a little strange, but let's do it. Um, so I'm gonna go back over there. Let's go. All right, so um, this is an instrument that I got many years ago, and one of the names it goes by is Trine, and I think, actually, this one has a slightly different name. It's aluminum. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the person who made it. Uh, I can't conjure the name at this particular moment, but uh, let me show you what it is in a little more detail, if I can get it off of here. It's got a swivel on the top, and maybe I can show you in the overhead. Well, yeah, if I hold that up, it's not gonna be in focus. Let me see what I can do, but let's, let's look at the overhead view for a second. It's kind of cool. So that's what you're looking, that's from the top, looking down, of course, and then it has this little swivel connector on the top. I don't know if this will auto -fo focus or not, let's see. So far, not. All right, well, I'm not gonna go around focusing the cameras right now, um, but you can see there's a swivel there, and I did, I lubricated that earlier, just for you guys, because I care about you. So that allows it to spin, and, um, and the thing that's cool about the spinning is that it modulates the sound, you know, just from the sound coming off of di at different angles, to the microphone, so there's my mic is right here, and I'm gonna spin this. Now one way you can play this is to get it going first, and then hit it. And of course you have different pitches. As the segments get longer, of course, as they go down, they, they react differently. Um, you can play it, you know, with different, I'm just using a triangle beater right now, but you can play it with different implements. That's nice, you guys. And get all sorts of sounds. I know I should have used this for the spooky sounds for uh, last time for Halloween, but that's okay. We have plenty of sounds without it, but it's pretty cool. Um, what does it have to do with gratitude? You tell me in the comments. All right, but that is the, I want to say Trine, T-R-I-N-E, but um, I think this is actually has a different name. It might be Trine. I don't know. Anyway, I'm trying to remember. All right, you guys, uh, let's put this back because we might use it later. I'm going to, and I'm also, I want to show you the stand I'm using. I'm just using a cymbal stand that is on a boom. I guess you can see it, right? It's on a boom arm like that and just hanging there like, like you would hang maybe a little gong or something because it kind of is a little gong in a way. It's a metal sound. Okay, so that is that. I'm just, I don't know that they're sold anymore. I know some of you are probably asking, where can I get one? I don't know. As far as I know, these were not being made as of recently, but if anybody has any information on them, please post it. That's why we're here, to help each other. All right, we're going back over to the desk. Hang on. I feel like I should have a transition video. I'll work on that. But that's pretty fancy. I don't know if we need that. All right. I see some newcomers. Welcome, everybody. Um, all right. So we're going to do a musical game like always. We have uh, musical games. Now, this video is a bit longer because I do the game 
and then I do an extension of the game. So it's kind of like a twofer right now. You're going to see uh, two ways or two iterations of the same idea. And um, I actually add a movement extension onto this too, so that you can take this in lots of directions. Um, I call this Let's All Play. And it's based on, basically it's setting up a rhythm that uh, has a certain number of beats. Everybody knows what it is, you'll see in the video. Uh, and everybody plays, it's basically setting up a rhythmic cue. All right, that's, that's the, the device that we're using in this game. And then the group has a group response, which is just to play one note. So you'll hear it. I'm going to play it for you. And then we'll come back on the other side. And if you have any questions after you watch it, just let me know. Uh, so here is the game. Let's all play. Okay, so you guys did a great job with the let's all clap our hands, let's all snap our, let's all pat our, that kind of thing. So now we've got instruments. So we're gonna move on with that one. And when I say, let's all play our drum, even if you don't have an actual drum, just play whatever you have, okay? So that's gonna be, you ready? Let's all play our, let's all play our, let's all play our, So now I'm going to shorten that a little bit. Instead of let's all play our mm, it's going to be play, um, all play our, so just three notes in front, right? All play our, That's excellent. Now we're gonna make it play our, mm, play our drum, okay? So just two notes, you ready? Play our. You guys are professionals at this. And we could all take turns leading that too, right? So it's nice to give your participants a chance to try that as well. Uh, we're going to move on and do a little extension of this. This time I'm going to say, let's all play our drum because it's so much. Exactly. So you're going to hear, let's all play our drum because it's so much. Drum. Yes. And that word is fun, of course. Let's all play our drum because it's so much. All right, so that's very easy for you. You guys are pros. So let me make it a little more challenging. I'm gonna take away some of the end of that phrase. You're not gonna hear it, but it's still gonna be there. So you have to use your mind's ear to complete that phrase, right? So you're not going to hear the whole thing. So it might sound like this. Let's all play our drum because... Yeah, perfect. And you play on the word fun. Let's try that for a second. Mm -hmm. Now... We want to use our ears more than our eyes. So I'm going to ask you to do two things. One is close your eyes. 
Second thing is, don't tap your feet or make any sounds that would give it away. So no counting out loud, no vocalizing. Just use your mind's ear. We call that audiation. So make it easy on you, but it's going to get more challenging as we go along. And don't worry, it's all, this is all for fun, right? We're all going towards fun. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Let's do that one together. Ready? Let's all play our drum beat. <laughs> all right. Okay. So those are all available. Uh, those that game and other games are available on the uh, Patreon site, part of the Drum Fun Collection, as you guys know. Um. So. Uh, if you have any questions about that, you can ask. Uh, everything's over there. I put the link in the description. And uh, Lacey has a question about bongos. And that question is, do bongos make a good beginner instrument? Now, I would say, let me, let me answer that in two ways. I would say yes and no. And let me clarify. Yes, bongos make a good beginner instrument because they're small. They're relatively inexpensive. They're portable. They are recognized, you know, they're common, they're commonly used in lots of different uh, music. You can integrate them into lots of different musical settings and styles. I, so I like bongos for all those reasons. And um, I would say on the no side, or I would say I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for beginner, but I want to say it depends because a professional set of bongos, one thing is that they're a little bit heavy. I mean, they're solid, right? They're, they should be kind of beefy. And if you're going to hold the bongos in the traditional style, which is between your legs, um, then it, they can be a little difficult to manage. Um, so if you, are, if you are a beginner and you want to have bongos, I recommend having a, a short stand, like a, I know this sounds like a, a, uh, contradiction in terms, but it's called a sit-down stand or a, 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 just a short stand. So you can have them on a stand while you're seated, unless you want to stand, and then you can have them higher. Um, I, I also do, you can see my bongos right there. I have those on a stand and I can play them while I'm seated. They're a little high. They're not in the traditional position. Uh, so that stand is, is it's different. It's, it's like a, that's like a stand that we would use like in a jazz band or orchestra or something to put the bongos on and play them while we're standing. But again, that's not traditional uh, in terms of Latin music. Not that you have to play the bongos like you're in a salsa band. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying if you want to play them in the traditional way, which would be seated between your legs, they could be a little heavy. Um, that's okay. If you, But I would recommend having a stand, have a short stand, and then you can sit and then play the bongos without holding them, without having to hold them. So I would say if you're gonna do that, it makes it much easier. I would say that puts it in the more recommended for beginners category. The last thing I'll say about the bongos is that um, really the technique is a little bit, uh, it's not as comfortable as say a conga drum or frame drum um, or even djembe um, because we're using part, just less of our fingers and the technique can actually, again, if you're going to try to go for a more traditional bongo technique, um, you want to, you want to give yourself time to develop the technique because they could be a little uncomfortable on your hands in the beginning. However, depending on how you want to play the bongos, maybe that won't, wouldn't be an issue for you because again, you don't have to play every instrument as it would traditionally be played by a professional percussionist. You can, you can play it in a different way. And a lot of people do. They get drums and they play them 
in a way that you know is right for them. So I hope that answers your question. If you'd like me to clarify anything, just put it in the comments. So you guys, uh, I'm bringing in this new segment because uh, we do have some Yanni fans out there. And I thought since I played in Yanni's band, and if you didn't know that, now you know, I thought I would share, you know, let's reminisce. I'm, I'm <laughs> it might be fun for you guys. Uh, so I've, I've got a collection and I have this title that I used. I have this title slide I'm going to show you right now that I used what I actually made a little video series called Reflections of Yanni. So I made this with a younger me. And here's, here's a photo. We're going to look at photos and I'll be in this little window. So this is from the very first year I was in the band. This is from 1991. And how do I know that? Because I don't know if you can see the mouse. Can you guys see this? I don't know if you can see the mouse on there. I can see my mouse on the screen, but I don't know if you can see it. So from left to right, obviously, okay, so that's me over there with all the hair. Um, and then next to me is Amy Shiatani, and she was a keyboard player, and she played the uh, first year. I think it was just the first year. And then next to her is Sachi McHenry, the cellist, and she played, she played every year I played at least for the for the four years I was with him. And then above her is Bradley Joseph, who does a lot of music. And you guys maybe know Bradley, if you're a Yanni fan. Um, Bradley played with Yanni before any of us. And then after, he played also. And he was the keyboard player. And then having a the time of her life um, next to Sachi is Julianne French. She was a violinist. And then uh, right behind her is Charlie Adams, drummer and um he of course played with yanni for many years before the band and then i think he still plays with them now today that's charlie adams and then next to him is charlie bisharat and charlie bisharat is also a violinist we had three violinists um not pictured here is uh karen briggs the other violinist who of course was the star of the live at the acropolis show and Osama Afifi, who you're going to see in a second, and he was a bass player. And then, of course, our main man, Yanni, is right above my head, uh, right there. Little profile shot. So, But this was just an informal, I think this was after a show in the green room or something, and we took that picture. Uh, and that's what that is. So I want to move, I'm going to move through these because I'm not going to spend all, all the evening on, uh, on this. But that I'll, this is the kind of a, a taste for you guys. I have a bunch of pictures I'll share with you. This is my, this is in the first year. This is my massive setup. And, um, and so, yeah, I had a lot of gear, you guys. And this isn't even the biggest setup. I, it got bigger. I think this was at the beginning, maybe in the first rehearsals. So you can see I've got uh, congas, bongos, djembe. I've got an udu drum, which is a, uh, the utar udu. Uh, and then a bunch of chimes and stuff. I think that's a key tree I have over there to my right and some wood blocks and tambourine, mounted tambourine, some cymbals. Um, I think this was, I was building the setup. And then here is, this is in the rehearsal studio that we had, we were rehearsing at this place over in North Hollywood. And you can see now the guy on the left, that's Osama Afifi, bass player, and then Bradley Joseph. And then uh, our house manager, and I forgot his name, uh, but he was one of the crew, and then Charlie Adams, and then Yanni is kicking back over there. And um, this was in a room that we rehearsed in. I think we rehearsed for four weeks, or was it six weeks? It might have been six weeks of rehearsals, and that was the very first year that when we first started because we had to work through everything. We had to come up with all the parts and rehearse all the songs. Everything is there was nothing. There was nothing for you know. As I started as a percussionist. Um, there was nothing for me like written down. There's no charts or anything. I basically had to come up with all my own parts. Um, except for, of course, if there was like a cymbal crash, uh, or there were parts on the recordings already. And in some cases, you know, he would have a shaker or a cymbal crash or something. And so I would do those. But as far as congas, djembe, bongos, colors, other sounds, that kind of stuff, I, I had to design all that myself. Uh, of course, with Yanni's approval and then and then that's what became um, the music that I played on tour and developed, you know, into the Live at the Acropolis show. All right, one more is a this is another setup photo. I am not in it, but um, 
I want to point out that these congas I had, I didn't never took these on on tour because they're these are kind of uh, collectible. That was a set of Valji congas that I had. And then my very first djembe, I think that was my very first djembe there. And you can see a Paiste gong back there because you got to have a massive gong always. Uh, you know, bongos, cymbals, other stuff. So that was uh, another setup. Also a wind gong, so which I did use um, from time to time, the wind gong. And that's in a giant Gibraltar rack. And you can see I had a couple triangles there and some other stuff. So um, yeah, that was my setup early on. It changed a lot uh, over time. And uh, of course, I also got some endorsements and, you know, instrument endorsements and deals from different brands like Peisty and Toka Percussion. And so I started using those instruments. Um, all right. So um, any other questions? I don't see any. Hey, David, welcome. And welcome, Lacey um, and Rebecca and Roseanne, of course. Um, all right, I'm going to go over and we're going to do some rhythm stuff. Oh, thanks for the link, Roseanne. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, you guys, and if you guys want to see me playing more, you can watch the Yanni tune Within Attraction and also Keys to Imagination. Those are two kind of more percussion, percussion heavy ones. Um, and then I think I did a, well, my solo was, ah, I forgot the name. Might have been Within Attraction. I don't know. Standing in Motion. No. Um, I had a percussion solo towards the end of the show. I don't remember the, the, the tune it was in. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go back over to the percussion setup, and we're going to do, I'm going to do a mini lesson right now. We're going to look at um, odd meter. I mean, that doesn't mean strange. <laughs> we'll explain it in a second. Uh, so I'm going to go back over to the instruments, and then after that, we have a, a, a little bit of a reading about flow state, music making, and then we have our community events, what's happening around town, and then we're going to do some Q&A. All right, so that's coming up. Stand by. Be right there. All righty. Um, so I want to focus on... I'm going to put these on because I might want to live loop. So... What I'm, I'm going to do right now, you guys, is uh, first I want to play you a little bit of the music that I played when, when you first got here. So here, that's what this is. question to you is where is what's the meter and if you hopefully this is all in sync but I want you to conduct with me all right I'm going to conduct again and see if you can track with me as you hear it I know you're hearing it later but but you're hearing what you're hearing uh hopefully just all together um so let's do that again and follow along with me you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing but see if you can get the downbeats with me So that is 
what we call 7-8. Uh, you can, I actually have my click in 7-4, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But I'm phrasing in 7-8, which is double that speed. So, ducka, 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 ducka. Now, if you're a Yanni fan, you would be very familiar with that feel because that is what um, the opening song that we would play. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, Keys to Imagination with an attraction. There, I think the, all those are in 7 8. And 7 uh, 8, uh, Yanni being Greek, you know, he used a few odd meters, I think 9, and there was 7, and there was what, tune in 5. Um, very interesting, a lot, of, a lot of mixed meter. So I wanted to just break that down for you and explain that that's what I was doing in, op in the opening. So if you were kind of trying to tap your toe along, but it felt like, well, wait a minute, I felt like I was with it, and now I don't. I feel like it's off, you know. That's why, because if you were if you were thinking one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, it doesn't it doesn't work, right? Because we're actually we've got one less eighth note than that, because uh, that four four has eight eighth eighth notes, obviously one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and we're in da da di di da di di da di 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 da di di one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven. All right, so that's what it is seven eight. Uh, I did a video a little while back on odd meters, so if you need a refresher, go find that. It's on the channel. And uh, and then if you go listen to Yanni's music, again, maybe listen to Keys to Imagination or Within Attraction, and uh, connect with that meter, and then you can count along, and maybe it'll be more satisfying for you because you'll feel like, okay, now I can hear that, and I know... I know where the rhythm is, where the cycle is. All right, that's it. I'm going to go back over, and we're going to do a little bit of reading, and then our community happenings and uh, Q&A, and we'll call it a night. Probably come back here and play a little bit more. Um, I have fun playing over 7-8 in the bongos. I was trying to kind of mix it up a little bit, play some unusual rhythms over the top. All right, so stay right there. I'll be right with you. I guess someday I'll have uh, everything so I can just pivot and uh, I won't have to go back and forth to my desk. But I have different mics, different setups. I'm close to my computer now. Uh, when I'm over there, I can't access my computer really. can't see anything on it. It's too tiny. And I don't have my keyboard and my mouse and stuff. All right, so this uh, is a reading, again, from... Um, there's my, <laughs> there's my title slide for 7-8 Rhythm. This is from The Way of Music, and uh, this is from the chapter called, it's chapter 7 called States of Play. And I wanted to read you guys this section on flow state music making. And think about this as you practice and play. This is page 142. For all that it asks from us, from pleading with our parents to buy the, that first instrument, to the discipline of weekly lessons, to giving up free time to practice for hours at a time when your friends were all outside playing, to being a band geek, to performance anxiety and fear of judgment, to the stigma and stereotypes of being a musician, why do we play music? We do it quite simply because it makes us happy. Music gives us a voice to express what words cannot, but it also gives us a challenge. It seems that there's something in the human spirit that needs to be pushed forward, to strive, to be challenged, to overcome and to achieve in order to feel good. Happiness can be described as the feeling we get when we have a sense of purpose, a direction, and what comes from participating in the pursuit of reaching our goals. With this in mind, we turn our attention towards the process of what author Mihail Csikszentmihalyi calls the psychology of optimal experience, or what is often simply described as flow. A flow state 
is a condition where one's perceived skills are adequate to meet the present challenges. It's gaining satisfaction from engaging in a challenging activity and having the skills needed to be in the game. Achieving a state of flow appears to have benefits similar to the ones might to the one um, to those one might gain from meditation. One condition that is often reported by people who enter a state of flow is a sort of opening up or freeing of the mind. It doesn't seem to matter if the activity is intense, such as playing basketball, skiing, or playing hard rock music, or calm, such as playing golf, cooking, gardening, or playing a soft ballad. When a person engages in their flow activity, it seems that it occupies their mind just enough to free, that, to free it to process unconscious thoughts and impulses. People sometimes report that it is within flow experiences that they are able to come up with their, quote, best ideas or, quote, receive inspiration that they can apply to other areas of their life. It seems that entering into a flow state is about more than feeling good. It's also a kind of enhanced state of mind, perhaps moving closer to what some call enlightenment. Author Victor Wooten writes in The Music Lesson, Quote, when I play it at my best, I'm not thinking. I'm in the zone. Music is flowing through me, but this flow is broken sometimes when I make a mistake. When I practice, I use concentration to learn what the technique is. Then I use not concentrating to get completely comfortable using that technique. So that's all. Uh, it goes on, but I wanted to read you just that that bit and that is in the way of music creating sound connections in music therapy is the byline you can get that on amazon if you want and i wanted to bring that up because i feel like we all need more we need to understand how to get into a flow state and the point is that you don't need a certain level of skill it's not about that the flow state is where it's like if you could think of a chart right and on one axis of the chart you have challenge level and on the other axis of the chart you have skill level your skill level now if you drew a diagonal line going up any point on that diagonal is where you could be in a flow state and why is that because it doesn't matter if your challenge level is one if your skill level is one you're going to be they're going to meet right and there's going to be balance if your skill level is 18 if your challenge level is also 18, that's okay. You're still balanced. So it, it, it doesn't matter where your skill level is. It matters where your challenge level is according to your skill level. Um, that being said, if you're over-challenged, uh, sometimes we associate that with anxiety and stress, right? If you're under-challenged, however, uh, that you could get bored and disinterested. So being under-challenged is, is just as useless as being over-challenged when we're talking about getting into a flow state. So I, I, for your, you guys, for your homework or for your takeaway from this video, from this uh, show, is I'd like you to think about that and find ways in your own practice to push yourself to what we could call your edge, right? Your, that place where your skills are, are sufficient, but you're not entirely comfortable and you're, you feel like you're making, you know, little wobbles, little bobbles here and there. Maybe you can call them mistakes. I don't really, I think that word is irrelevant when you're practicing. Um, you're just trying things out. Uh, it's like I, one person described it as a skier going down a, a hill. And it's those moments like where they almost fall over, but they don't. And they catch themselves. And they sort of feel like they might wipe out, but they don't. Or you could think of a surfer or anything, really, where you're, you know, you're just pushing yourself kind of to that zone um, and then in that flow state that's the flow state because you're you're going to be engaged and you're going to be creating solutions to propel yourself into that area of music and creativity that you want to go right and that's and that's unique to you this isn't about doing anything that other people are doing or have done or recommend that you do this is you finding your own flow state, in your own way, your own path, that's it. 
So this is for you. Um, it's not about comparing yourself to anyone else. Uh, I mean, you could do that in a competition, but we're not talking about that right now. So we're just talking about flow state. And then also not only practice that, but then think about other areas of your life where that similar relationship exists. And you all probably have some hobbies that you like. Um, and I think about that and how you can engage yourself in that flow state. Um, and people just, and the, the reason I'm recommending that is because people seem to enjoy it and it seems to be beneficial to be in that state. So now that you know the formula for flow state, you can do flow state music making or flow state cooking or flow state whatever it is that you enjoy to do, you, you enjoy doing. All right, uh, it's Q and A time. So do we have any new questions? Um, and it's okay if we don't, but I'm if we don't have a question, let me know, Roseanne. And, and if we don't, it's okay. I'm going to move on and we're going to do our community calendar, community happenings. Maybe I'll start doing that. And then if we have questions, um, I can certainly answer them. We're going to get through this. we got a few things for you guys. And then, uh, yeah. And then it's, 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 then it's all about Turkey <laughs> from here on in. All right. So here's some events. Uh, JW Jones concert. This is a live concert. If you're in the Montreal area, uh, Quebec, um, November 26th coming right up. There's the URL, take a screenshot or, uh, go back and watch this video later. If you, if you don't have time to write it down. Our friend Butch Norton is performing with Lucinda Williams in Milan, Italy. So there's an excuse, you guys. <laughs> there's the excuse you needed to, to get over there. Uh, but if you're already there or if you're going to be nearby, think about checking them out January 10th. J.A. Latin Rock Reimagined, The Last Mambo, and No Se Acabo. Uh, that's San Francisco area, Bay Area my hometown area, uh, February 11th. So we're ahead of the curve here. Now, um, check that out. And then here are our drum circles. we got a couple new entries for you guys. Remo Kids Drum Circle, uh, you can find out there, remo.com slash experience slash post slash kids dash drum dash circle. That's a live event. If you want to do online stuff, uh, Remo has a program they're calling Rhythm, Wellness, and You. And they have guest facilitators and some other things there. So go check that out. And then I, I want you guys, I want to, I'm so happy about this. We're having Taylor back at World Drum Club for our percussion hang coming up. That's, is that this Sunday? I think it is. It's coming up, you guys. So we've got a uh, percussion hang with Taylor. And I, last week and the week before, I had the wrong time. So this is the right time, 11 to 11.50 a.m., right before the Zuma flute along. And this is also, the live link is for patrons. So if, you, if you'd if you like to join us live, you do need to be a patron, um, or you need to find a way to break into the patron-only Zoom, um, which if you do, I probably won't kick you out, but... Uh, we encourage you to be patrons, of course. And uh, Michael Taylor is a wonderful djembe player, teacher. He's going to talk about, uh, I'm going to ask him to talk about soloing on djembe and playing a little. But he's got, he's a, he always has good stuff. And he does drum meditations and things. So go to holygoat.com and check out what he's doing. But he'll be with us live Sunday at 11 a.m. And, of course, how do you sign up? You go to patreon.com slash Kalani. And uh, join us and become a patron and support this channel and the events and all the effort it takes <laughs> to make this stuff happening uh, because it does take a lot um, of time and energy to put these things together. Uh, so um, we have a couple more minutes and then uh, we did have a question, lessons on... What is the question? Any lessons on World Drum Club or? Oh, is that Patreon? About, about clave. Okay. Are there lessons about clave? Um, 
I don't know if there's lessons about clave per se, but like what what kind of things about clave, just how to play clave, the different types of claves. Send me a note and let me know exactly, or or you can type it here real quick if you if we have time. Um, but yeah, I could do that. Uh, certainly create something about clave, um, like son clave, rumba clave, Afro-Cuban, room like six eight clave. 4-4 four, four clave, is that, I don't know if this is that what you're thinking about, or just how to hear clave, or, you know, 2-3, two, 3-2, three, three, two, forwards and backwards, that kind of thing. There's a lot of stuff about clave, so that we could, we could cover. So let me know what you're interested in in particular, otherwise I'll make a video about it all, because that's what I, I hope to do for you guys. Uh, yeah, answer your questions. Uh, Lacey wants to know, is there anything on Quica? Um, Yes, I have a video about Quica. It's a few years old. I think it's Monkey Drum or Quica. Uh, it's, it's on the channel. So look up Quica. You can search it, Quica or Monkey Drum. It's, it has a literal image, cartoon monkey on top of the Quica. Um, all right. And thank you, David. Again, you're the man. And by the way, you're all welcome to to drop a tip in the super chat thing. I don't know how to do it, but I know that there is a way um, that you can donate now live. If you're not a patron and and hopefully you feel a little guilty about watching all this, not that I want you to feel guilty, but I do want you to feel like they're like you you know you're happy to to chip in. It's just like you know throw some money in the tip jar kind of thing. And if you want to, that's always welcome. Um, and uh, let us know, you guys, if you have any news or if you think there's anything that we should be sharing with the community, uh, send me a note or send Rosanna a note if you're in touch with her. And uh, you can do you can drop some information in the in the World Drum Club Facebook group. We have a group over at Facebook because Patreon's system not that great. So we started the Facebook group because we all love Facebook, right? <laughs> and how easy it is to navigate everything and how you never see any bad information over there. You can just relax and not worry about it because everything you see there is real and valid. All right. Um, oh, you just spent $230 on bongos. All right, congratulations. <laughs> We appreciate it, David. Thanks for the uh, thanks for chipping in. You're very generous. Um, and uh, this also, I hope you I hope patrons are watching this because we created this show to to literally show up every week and make sure that we're addressing the concerns and requests of patrons. This channel is driven by patrons. It's supported by patrons. So if you're not a patron, it's okay. We still love you. We're still glad you're here, but um, this, the whole, really the driving purpose of this is to tailor the content for you guys. So please communicate with us, Roseanne or me, and let, you know, ask, ask for what you want. That's why we're here. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up. Um, I guess I'll go back and play a little, and then we're gonna sign, I'll sign off somehow. I have to get up and get back over to my computer and press a button to do that. but. Um, I want to thank you guys for for spending your evening, um, unless you are getting up very early in Europe or Asia, in in which case, good morning, or good good the middle of the night. Sorry you couldn't sleep, but at least you got to join us on World Drum Club if you are in like Ireland or something. Um, appreciate you guys. I'm gonna go back and play a little bit more and just um, enjoy the music, and uh, we will see you next Tuesday. For Muse Day, for Tuesday Muse Day, um, yeah, Happy Thanksgiving! I'm gonna go play a little. Hang on, we're not done yet. <laughs> All righty, I'm gonna um, go ahead and continue with the seven eight groove I had from uh, from before, and just add. We'll add a little bit to it. And uh, thanks, everybody, for, for being here. And uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs>